of you have to say a big thank you to John Foster, who is always a mine of useless information, <laughs> as well as some real gems. Um, and I've certainly learned to know a lot. I never knew that pump and nickel meant what it meant. <laughs> so I look at that bread now in a new light. Um, it's very natural what he's talking about. So um, um, thank you for that illumination. But thank you also, John, for just bringing so much wisdom and knowledge and passion and enthusiasm about bread. For getting us working together, but always, always making us apply it to God and his loving Jesus. So can we say a big thank you to God? And through John, can we say a big thank you to Foster's Bakery for um, sponsoring this event? Um, <laughs> so we're just going to join together in a very simple meal, the love feast. Um, the love feast is slightly different from communion. You can use biscuits or bread. You can use wine or water. We're actually using bread and wine tonight. But it's very, well, it's different from communion. And it's a lot more informal, a lot more um, ordinary. At the love feast, we gather to give thanks, to share in prayer, to testify as John has to the love of God, and to share food together. So let's pray. God, you nourish us, so feed us in our time of worship now. Feed us through the words, feed us in our thoughts, and nourish us as we come to Jesus, the living bread. May you fill us and sustain us today for always. Amen. Amen. So you probably know this very simple hymn. We're just going to sing, remaining seated, the first and the last verse. <laughs> Jesus the, the Lord said, I am the bread, the bread. Love. 
given on a cross. And you invite us to feed our bread in communion and in our sharing of meals daily. So Holy Spirit, we thank you and praise you that like the yeast brings new life to the bread. You transform our lives, bringing joy through sharing, uniting us in love. As fellow worshippers around the table, and inspiring us to hunger for a better world for the lives of all people. For the way you love and feed us, create a Son and Spirit who we'll bless and praise your name. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. We're going to hear a reading from John's Gospel. got into the boat and went to Capernaum in search of Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him, the God the, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, what must we do to do the work God requires? Jesus answered, The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, What sign will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. I wonder what the last thing was that you ate before you came in tonight. Did you have a sneaky bar of chocolate? Did you have a full dinner? Maybe you grabbed a sandwich? Was it good or bad? Was it healthy or unhealthy? <laughs> Strange isn't it how we give food a moral weighting, such that some food is better for us than others. Food can become a means of control. But it's interesting, isn't it, how Jesus often spent so much time eating, and it seems that to him, eating was an important feature in understanding and knowing God and one another. Eating
meaty matters to Jesus. Amen, I say to that. <laughs> but deep down, I think eating matters in a spiritual way as well, because all of us are hungry for something more in our life, for someone more in our life. And just as bread and water are essential for our physical frame, so I want to say Jesus is essential for giving life to our very being, our soul, our spirit. Jesus isn't simply any old bread. He's premium bread. Where was it? Latvia, was it? Lucky bread. He's the best bread you can ever taste. The bread who truly satisfies because he's the bread from heaven. And having heard what Jesus has done for us, is there anything we need to do? In order to be satisfied, we need to take our fill of him and then share him to a world also hungry. So that's why Jesus invites us, I think, to come and feast on him. But the story doesn't end there. We're then commissioned to go out and feed the world with the love of Jesus. We are satisfied. And that satisfaction is shared to us. So I want you for a moment just to think how you'll respond to Jesus' invitation to you tonight to come and eat of the bread of life. Just a moment of quietness. Maybe you can join with me in saying this prayer that's on the screen. Lord Jesus, we come to you, believing that you are the bread of life. You are the one who one true sacrifice. Please forgive us for trying to satisfy our inner hunger with wrong things. We believe that you died for us and rose again to offer us a new start. Please give us the gift of life that will satisfy us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. For the hungry in our world and in our communities, we pray, Lord, may they hunger no more. For those who hold the power to feed others, May they be grace-filled. For those who struggle with food and eating in our world, our church, or in our community, Lord, may they struggle no more. And for those who sit at a table of sickness, loneliness, grief, or fear, Lord, may they know your nourish, nourishing love tonight. For we pray that you will not only feed and nourish us, but also your whole world, those in need, in your grace. Amen. We're just going to listen to um, a song yeah. called Jesus, Bread of Life, Man from Heaven. And then we're going to share some food.
So you have some bread on your table. Jesus is the bread of life. Will you take some bread? Just tear it off and hold it for a minute. You don't need to take a small piece, you can be really generous. Because Jesus isn't mingy, he's abundant. So take as much as you like. May God bless our food, may God bless our eating. May God bless you as you are satisfied by Jesus now. Smell and taste and know that God is good. Maybe you could then take your glass at a party, usually a wedding, we toast, as a bread turn, the bride and groom. So tonight let's toast Jesus to Jesus and to one another, to one another. May God bless us as we drink. Gratefulness to God for all that we've shared, for all that Jesus means to us, and for all that He yet can be for us. Let's close with a blessing. So may you know the God who offers you nourishment this night. May you share in His food that brings you life, life in all its fullness. May you know the welcome at the table of God. And may you know the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Spirit, who is with us, but also with those we love and those that we ought to love, this day and for always. Amen. So that's a wrap, as they say. <laughs> Take the lot. <laughs> so please take some of the people to send for your advice.